states that I want to know what is the permissible way to fix a bride's mahar, that is the dowry of a bride uh, from her husband, and what is the ruling to calculate it. We know that in Islam there are pillars of a marriage, that without it the marriage is void and invalid. And there are mandatory things that are part of the marriage, and there are conditions. And the mahar, or the money given from the groom-to-be to his wife before, or during, or after the contract, which is agreed upon both of them, this is a woman's right. And it is part of the obligations of marriage. So it can precede marriage, and it can be within the contract, and it can come afterwards, depending on the availability of the money with the groom and on their agreement. Is there a fixed amount? The answer is no. So would it be possible that a man marries a woman without naming a mahar, a dowry? The answer is yes. And what happens afterwards? Afterwards, the man is supposed to give her mahar. But because there was no prior agreement, there might be some dispute. He might give way less than the average. So the scholars say that it depends on the average of the dowry in the community she lives in. It is an, uh, uh, an issue of supply and demand. So if he comes and proposes and they accept his proposal, he says, I'm going to give you X amount of money. They may say, no, this is too much. Give us less than that. Or they may say, we accept. Or they say, this is too little. We want more. So. It is not what the man gives, and it's not unquestionable. On the contrary, it depends on the approval of the girl. If she says she's fine with it, alhamdulillah. And of course, in the Sharia, in the Islamic law, it is highly recommended that the dowry is as minimum as possible. And the more the expenses, the less blessing the marriage is. And the lesser the expenses, whether it's a dowry, the wedding, etc., then the more blessed the wedding and the marriage would be as uh, uh, stated by the Prophet and also discussed thoroughly uh, through the scholars.